OK, let's get more now on the sad news that the former BBC sports presenter Harry Carpenter has died at the age of 84. I'm joined on the line now by the former world boxing champion uh, Barry McGuigan. And Barry McGuigan, very good to talk to you. And Harry Carpenter, I know, commentated on many of your fights and you got to know him very well. Yeah, I got to know him very well. He was, uh, an, uh, you know, he was an amazing one-off individual who we'll never see again. Um, you know, he was a he was a guy in a time when you know one guy had the microphone. He didn't share it with another commentator. Um, he had to be uh, succinct. He had to be to the point. He had to paint a picture. Um, he was a former journalist. He was brilliant. He had not just Bruno. Everybody knows him as synonymous with Bruno. But he, he and you know. Right through both Ali, Muhammad Ali's, and George Foreman's, and the great you know, Rumble in the Jungle, the Thriller in Manila, uh, you know, worked through the Tyson Bruno first fight, and you know he was, uh, and, and as well as that, John, he was a fabulous and brilliant presenter, uh, silky smooth, and and a beautiful man outside of, uh, outside of boxing too, and and helped the boxing fraternity and was part of the boxing writers club and just a, a brilliant guy and I knew I knew him and his wife Phyllis and they were lovely people and Barry you talked about some of those great fights you forgot to mention one just around the corner from these studios in West London at Queen's Park Rangers football ground where a certain Barry McGuigan uh, beat Mendoza <laughs> that's right a certain a certain fight in, in 1985 June the 8th and it's the 25th year this year and, and we're, we're doing various different celebrations and it was the first live fight on the BBC, the first show they'd done. They'd done Ali and they'd done Cooper and, uh, before, but there had never been actually a live show. So this was the first live show straight to air, and it was a superb success, a brilliant, a brilliant night. 20 million people watched the fight um, in those days. I mean, the audience was, was, was just incredible. And he was a brilliant commentator. He commentated right through my career. I won the Commonwealth Games gold in 1978. And I think he took about four or five days to get the pronunciation of my name right. But he was, he was uh, fantastic and lovely to me the whole way through. And then when I went to Moscow and boxed in the Olympic Games, he was there. And right through my professional career, in every one of the salient points, Harry Carpenter's voice was there. And he was fabulous. Sports night, grandstand, uh, big boxing nights. He was just a one-off. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, and Barry, you say that, and it, you know, and you talk about those audience figures. I mean, boxing used to be absolutely huge, didn't it? When there were the big fights on you, Bugner, you know, all the rest of them, it was big, big box office. Massive, massive, massive crowds and massive audiences, and, and they'll get them again. It's just that, you know, as you know, John, the way people watch TV these days, not just sport, but the way they watch TV has changed, and you know, the kids upstairs will watch... Uh, MTV and, and you know you know, one of them will watch Soccer AM and then you'll be downstairs watching the BBC or ITV or whatever so the way they watch it is different but when boxing uh, when you get boxers like Ali uh, Ali and uh, the, the likes of Bruno and uh, myself uh, and <laughs> it sounds like I'm blowing my own trumpet and even young uh, Amir Khan and David Hay they transcend the sport they bridge it they bridge it across to people like grand uh, grannies and granddads and and young people, they love them, and it's still a huge drawing card, boxing, no question about it. And I, I think the other thing that was extraordinary about Harry Carpenter is that often people who commentate on a sport, or if you're a political commentator, you have a kind of, rather, sometimes have a very difficult relationship with the people who are actually the practitioners, the people, in this case, in the ring. Yes. But you get a sense with Harry Carpenter that, you know, you and uh, Frank Bruno and all the rest had very, very good relations. Well, uh, absolutely, utmost respect for I mean, him and Reggie Guthridge, who were synonymous with each other, one was ITV, the other was BBC, and they had this friendly rivalry for years. But Harry had the uniqueness, and he, I remember he replaced, if I, if I remember, um, uh, Glenn Denning, um, the old commentator before that, and uh, um, he, he was unique, and he was BBC trained, and he had a really silky smooth voice, and he had a way of filling space that nobody else could do but also outside of that he had a tremendous relationship with the fighters real respect and um, you know old-fashioned uh, honor it was it was it was really unique and, and that's why it's such a you know it's such a sad day because Reggie just went a year, just over a year ago Reggie Guthridge and, and and Harry's gone now as well and, and it's, it's very sad um, he was a unique guy and he, an amazing presenter you know Wimbledon the boat race golf he was you know one-off 
Barry McGuigan, absolutely uh, beautifully said, lovely me memories shared. Thank you very much indeed uh, for being with us. Harry Thank Carpenter, whose death has been announced today.